Uh, my name is Nasika. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Nasca. I'm a photographer based out of Montreal, Canada. Um, I love Portland. It's my, my fourth, fifth time here. I'm usually here doing stuff with Nike uh, and different brands that are out here, Doc Martin. Uh, but today we're talking about photography and why photography is important uh, to your e-commerce website. Understand that in photography, I mean, sorry, when you're doing an online platform, e-commerce store, Photography is basically the only first impression you have to wow your client. So you want to make sure that you're taking great pictures so that they get a first impression of what your company's about, what your brand's about. That's why photography is really important for e-commerce. I mean a lot of feedback. Hello. So today we're going to, we're going to talk about the basis of uh, photography and how to do and how to do basically do it yourself. So they were outlining, so I have two screens here. Uh, this is just for the picture so you have to see it better, and this is the following as well. So they were talking about the camera. Yeah, stop. Sorry, uh, yes. I'm stopping for one yes. second so we can get our volume in the sort of, it's really hard to hear back towards that corner. You guys want me to talk louder, or am I okay? We're good? No, we're looking for some more volume, so. <coughs> we're good? I don't know if you guys have my cue. Are you guys hearing me over there? Oh, he's got a No, not really? A little more still? More? We're good? Everyone deserves to hear that angel voice. Okay. You want to make sure it's right. Are we good over in that corner? Nasca? Yep. Are we good? Okay. We're good? Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys. So today we're talking about the camera, the lens, aperture, ISO, shutter speed, camera settings, and obviously the studio. So the camera. Oh, what's going on here? Sorry. Next. So for your e-commerce websites and doing photography, I always recommend using an SLR. The reason you want to use an SLR is because you have the ability, next slide please. You have better image quality, you can control the shutter and focus speeds, flexible controls, and the ability to use different lenses. So when you have an SLR camera like this one, you can change the lens. And it's really important, depending on what you're actually shooting, you need different lenses for different things. So if you have a point you shoot or an iPhone, you're kind of limited to that one lens. So an SLR is always recommended for when you're doing product photography. Yeah. It's probably the dreads that's getting the feedback. All right. All right. Next slide, please. So lenses. So in, in photography, you have the lenses I recommend, if you're doing medium, medium product photography, light photography, I recommend focal ranges from a 35 to a 50 millimeter. So the medium products would be like, you know, uh, t-shirts, uh, smaller items. Uh, if you're doing, if you're, if you're, and also light photography, so we're talking about portraits and stuff in the field. Next slide, please. A zoom lens is this generally the standard lens that comes with your camera when you buy in the store. It's usually 18 to 55, 24 to 85. These are great for like large products. If you're doing something outside, you're shooting automobiles, you can actually zoom in and have that focal range. Um, this is also an example of a zoom lens. It goes from 70 millimeters to 200 millimeters. So you get really nice close up shots of products. Next. If you're doing jewelry and smaller items, uh, rings, earrings, you want to get a macro lens. A macro lens allows you to really zoom in really tightly on products and get all the details necessary. If you're going to show a ring, you really want to show the diamonds and the reflection of the light in the diamonds. So you want to get a macro lens. Really important when you do photography. So this, this, this is why a point and shoot doesn't really work out for these things. So when you have a DSLR, you can change your lens out and make these adjustments with your lenses. So now we're going to talk about aperture. This is going to be the screen we're going to use for uh, to get a better idea of the camera. So aperture controls the amount of light you get to your camera. Really, really important. I'm going to show you why. So this is basically your aperture settings on your lens. So you have f1.4, which is the widest aperture, and you've all the way to f8 in this particular example, which is a tinier aperture. So. If you have your lens set to 1.4, you're letting a lot more light into your camera, which means you get a shallow depth of field. We're gonna give you an example how that works. So, aperture is in sequence, depth of field. So this is a shot of a, of a, of a flower that was shot at f1.8. 
So as you can see, the, the, the flowers in focus a bit, and the background was really milky. So usually when you see a great photograph and you ask yourself, how do they get the model so crisp and sharp and the background is milky and it blends in, usually they're, showing, they're shooting at a lower aperture. The higher you go at F22, for example, you're going to see that the image and the background, everything's sharp, everything's in focus. So the aperture controls the amount of light you let in, which also controls the depth of field. So it's really important that when you're shooting product or shooting a lifestyle image or a model with your clothing, that you take into consideration what aperture you're shooting at. They say that the best aperture for portraits, for example, would be an f5.6. So the background is a bit blurred, and, but the, the, product, the, 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 the model in the middle is definitely all the focus. Next slide, please. So here's an example. Uh, this is the guy that I shot in Italy uh, this year. So I shot an f2. So to give you an example, he's super crisp and sharp inside the photo, and the background was blurred because I really want to put all my attention on the actual model. So today we can be kind of advertising the sunglasses, the lapel pin, maybe the handkerchief, but you can see that everything is sharp in the image. So that's how you achieve that look by a ring, uh, changing the settings on your actual lens to a lower aperture. Next. ISO. ISO controls light sensitivity of your camera sensor. This is really important. If you guys ever wondered why we have grainy photos sometimes, it's because you have your ISOs probably way too high. So we'll give you some examples of the grain, the grain photos. So this is a shot of, of, um, of a building. And the lower the ISO, the less noise you have, and the less deterioration in the actual photo. So this was shot, this is on, the left, on the left side here, ISO 100. You have, the, the image is kind of sharp and crisp. ISO 3200, it's a lot, it's a lot grainier. So always be careful that when you're in a studio setting or outdoors shooting something, that you keep your ISO as low as possible. Especially if we're using uh, lighting, which we're going to go cover it next. Next photo. Here's another example in New York City. This was shot at ISO 3200. You can't probably see it a bit, but it's a, there's a lot of grain. And in the next slide, we're going to show you the shot at ISO 800. So you see the image is a lot sharper and crisper, and that's how you achieve uh, less grain. If you really want to mimic, uh, let's just say, a uh, shooting film, you might want to raise the ISO sometimes to get that you actually want to do it on purpose to be more artistic if you want to have a grainy image to kind of emulate film. Well, other than that, you want to make sure your images are sharp, crisp, and, and without any distortion at all. Next. Shutter speed. Shutter speed is responsible for either freezing action or blurring motion. Really, really important when we're talking about lifestyle photography and also what you're going to be doing in the studio. So, the higher the shutter speed, the more your image is frozen in time. And it's really important that if you're shooting something in the studio, like a product, and you realize that your image is kind of blurry, or there's a bit of distortion, it's because your shutter speed is too low. And when you go to a shutter speed below 1 50th of a second, you're going to get blurred. So you're going to want to have a tripod. It's really important to have a tripod when you're shooting lower than 1 50th of a second. So this is a car that you swung across the floor, that we kind of like let go across the floor. One seven fifty of a second, you're going to see the car is kind of frozen. As we decrease, the car disappears. One tenth of a second and zero point seven seconds, the car is completely gone. So it's really important that you understand what shutter speed does when you're shooting your models or when you're shooting product. So here's an example: high shutter speed. So this was in Nevada, uh, Red Rock Mountains. Uh, the model name is Denny. We're shooting a campaign for a brand, a forward brand called ECCO Echo, and we wanted to have them jumping. So we, have, we raised our shutter speed to have a lifestyle image of the, of the model actually jumping, and everything is sharp as you can see. If we had a lower shutter speed, you would have been blurry, you would have seen motion blur. So just keep in mind, shutter speed controls the motion blur, and also, also create, controls the light into your camera as well. Another shot that we shot for a brand called Tumi, it was a luggage, uh, it's a luggage company that you guys probably know of, uh, T-U-M-I, and basically the, the campaign was having the model like he's traveling, floating in the air. So in order to, 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 to attain that, we shot at a higher shutter speed, at 1 200 per second. So the model's going to fly. Now we're going to talk about camera settings a bit. So, kind of what we discussed before, recommended tips. When you're shooting with, with natural light, or sorry, studio lighting, I would always recommend a lower shutter speed of one to one half second. Anything higher than that, sync speeds and strobe lights, it gets a bit confusing. But I always say keep your ISO between 100 and 400. 
and also your f-stop, which is your aperture, 5.6 if you want to have the background sharp with the, 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 the model sharp, and a bit low if you want to have that, that creamy background we discussed earlier on. Settings for shooting with your SLR camera. I always recommend you shoot in RAW and RAW and JPEG. Guess what FOSS settings? Um, generally, the point is just don't do that. The reason why you want to shoot in RAW is because RAW retains all the information that you actually shot. And after when you shoot in RAW, you can kind of go into Lightroom and Photoshop afterwards and tweak your images. So if you overshot something that's overly exposed, you can adjust that. You can uh, play with the shadows and everything else. You also want to make sure you're shooting in RAW or RAW and JPEG. So you go into your settings and you, you pick RAW JPEG, which means you have JPEG for faster viewing of your photos and RAW to have the actual full size, so full resolution so you get total quality when you shoot in RAW. Your white balance, you want to put them in, in, you want to put in automatic. The fact that you're shooting in RAW, your white balance controls the temperature of your photo. So let's just say you have a baking company and you're doing baked goods, you really want to have a, a, a warm feeling, that's what your white balance actually is. So you go to warmer colors to kind of show a warmth. If you're shooting something that's more sterile, more cold, uh, I don't know, hospital goods, you want it to be a lot colder, you go into more of the blue, so you raise your white balance. But if you set the automatic, you can then decide after post-production where you actually want that temperature to be. Shoot in manual. I also recommend shooting in manual. Manual gives you full control over your aperture, your ISO, and, and your shutter speed. And don't be afraid to kind of play with your camera. You're not going to break it. A lot of people get intimidated when you get a camera and you're like, I don't want to mess up the photo, just shoot the manual to get uh, accustomed to it. What I also recommend is what you can do is shoot an automatic, take a photo, and then jot down the settings that the camera gave you. And that's a good way to kind of say, wait a minute, I like the ISO was at 200 automatically, the shutter was at this, and then you write it down and you kind of start mimicking that to kind of get an idea to kind of read it for yourself. And like I said, shutter speed, 100th of a second or higher, if not, you're gonna need a tripod to kind of hold your shots, unless you have a steady hand like me. I think I have a steady hand. Anything lower, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have blur, so you wanna have your shutter speed at 100th or higher. Next. So here's an example of a studio shot. Uh, these are small bottles, really great company, the water bottles. Um, we shot this at 1 250th of a second, the aperture was 5.6, and the ISO was 400, and that's kind of the result that we got. Uh, slight manipulation in Photoshop to kind of make the blacks look blacker. But you can go home, take a water bottle, put on a, on a white background, and kind of put those settings you, with, with, with artificial lighting and you kind of get the similar results at shooting a bottle like that. So the most important part in photography is lighting. Uh, lighting intimidates a lot of people, but I wanna, I'm gonna show you guys a few ways to grasp it by the balls, sorry, my language, and, and kind of, you know, defeat lighting so you no longer feel intimidated by it. So types of lighting, you have continuous, next slide please, you have continuous lighting. Continuous lighting is what we have over here. Uh, so continuous lighting is basically lights that are always on. So there's no strobes, there's no, there's, there's, they're always on, so on and off switch. This is the easiest type of lighting to have in a studio setting because you're not worried, you're not worried about sync speeds and everything else. So here's another example of continuous lighting, you kind of just, you know, Put it on the one lighting you want, on and off, and it's always on. So that way you kind of what you see is what you get. Next. Strobe lighting. Strobe lighting when it gets a little bit more complicated. Whenever you see TV commercials, we see those big lights going off, like with a, with a sound, like a sync sound. Ping, ping, those are strobe lights. Those are a little bit more complicated for if you're, if you're starting off, but those lights that I prefer to use, I get to control a lot more. But those, that, those are strobe lights. Next. Speed lights. This is a speed light, also known as flashes. Uh, these are really great, and you get a lot of great light out of this as well. So don't be, you can actually buy this and create really great shots in the studio. And then the cheapest, most affordable light, natural lighting. Uh, this is a light that you can use every single day. You can go by a windowsill, you can do uh, uh, something outside. And this is basically a, a shot of a fan that we shot in natural light. So it's affordable, it's free, you can just kind of find the source and get your, your subjects here. So now we're going to go into the studio stuff, and this is where you want to really pay attention because we're going to incorporate lighting and, and doing stuff in the studio. So the components of a studio, you want to have a seamless backdrop. This is what we have in the corner over here. The reason why it's seamless is because there's no seams once you lay it down flat. So you always want to make sure that if you don't have a seamless backdrop, what you're going to have, if you have, if you, for example, put a sheet of paper against a white wall, that line, that corner, is a, it's a distraction to your photos. 
So you want it to always be seamless. You want to have, sorry, go back please. You want to have lighting up, of course. You want to have a tripod. You want to have a tripod with a tilting head. So this tripod here is an example. It has a tilting head like this. And the reason why you want that is because generally you're shooting products from above. So when you buy a tripod, you would have a tripod where you would have it like this, and your camera would be attached like, your camera would be attached like this shooting downwards. So you want to have a tripod with a tilting head, and you want to have light modifiers. Uh, light modifiers are really simple. It's basically when you put over a light. So over here we have what we call a soft box, which is just a diffuser panel in front, and this softens the light. If you were to shoot products with just a, a, a beer bulb, it would be too harsh. It create a lot of shadows. So you want a, a soft box that generally comes with lights to soften the light. This right here is the fusion panel and it softens the light. Next slide, please. So, seamless paper. Uh, this was purchased off of bnh.com. Uh, the paper itself, uh, this size is $29. And then the rack stand itself, so you have the two stands um, and the crossbar pole, I think it was about $150, if I'm not mistaken, by a brand called Savage. So really affordable if you have the space in your house, you can build a mini studio uh, by getting the seamless backdrop and your paper, and you can get different colors as well. So bnh.com is where we purchased that, and you can kind of find it at any local photography store. Ask for seamless paper, and you can also ask for your for the stand for that. Next slide. So here's an example. If you don't have the studio set up, this is an example cool yourself. So we took a piece of printer paper, taped it against the wall, and now that you understand what seamless is, we created a seamless effect without bending the paper, and we had the light, uh, the sunglasses on top. So it creates a seamless white backdrop. And then you understand what seamless is, you can kind of, kind of do it yourself everywhere you go. You don't have to necessarily have that big studio space. Next slide. Sorry, before that? After that? Okay. Um, so here's an example of shooting a polo uh, with one light set up from above, standing on the table, shot from above, and that's what we got when you shoot it on a seamless. So you would put your, your clothing items on top of the white and shoot it from above, and you would get uh, something similar to this. Next slide. So again, natural light. So this was uh, shot with the window light only, and the fan was set on the table. What you can also do is you can kind of put another light modifier, which we call a reflector. We're going to talk about the next slide, which bounces the light from the window. Sorry, no, bounces the light from the window onto a white piece of board, which is going to bounce back and kind of clear up the shadows behind the light. So that's with natural light. So you can still have a great product shot with using with using window light. Thanks. Another piece uh, that you can use uh, in photography is something called foam pour. So foam pour is just a basically white board you can get at your local hardware store. You can lay it flat on the ground over here. I'm going to show you over here. Flat on the ground, and you can shoot from above, getting the same type of white background. You're going to notice a ruler here, if you don't really see it. Um, the ruler is meant to measure where I place my item. It's really important in e commerce photography to have consistency in the look and feel of your website. So you kind of want to make markings to where you place your item last. So when you put a new item, it's always in the same position. So when I look at your website on a grid overview, all of the images are always centered in the middle. So I always take a ruler and make some markings, either with a pencil, whatever, and kind of just measure where you're putting your item. And always use the same size as well. So if you're doing t-shirts, always do medium. Don't do one large, one small, one extra large, because you're going to have different sizes. And visually, it's not going to look you know, presentable. So you always want to be consistent when you're, when you're shooting your products. Next. So we spoke with a tripod, tilting head, really important. Uh, I believe this guy cost uh, maybe 200 bucks. It may seem like a lot of money for a tripod, but it's solid, sturdy, and you have the head that you need to kind of do it yourself. So you want to make sure you invest in a good tripod so your camera that you spend a few hundred bucks on doesn't fall over when you're in the studio. So light modifiers, we spoke about soft boxes. Uh, uh, this is an umbrella, and that's a beauty dish. So soft boxes kind of went over the details. It softens the light. Next. So reflectors and bouncers. So this right here, this is again the foam core board. We take two together. We have white and we have black. So just to, just to understand how lighting works in photography, white 
bounces light, black absorbs light. Whenever you see those really dramatic portraits of people, uh, celebrities, and you see they have a, a nice, clear spot of light in your face and a dark shadow on the side, generally they will probably have a black board on the right side or the left side enough to create a nice dark shadow. So you kind of create uh, uh, a more dramatic feel to your, to, to, your, to your portraits or to your lifestyle images. And white would basically bounce light. So sometimes you see guys in, in TV shows or movies with like a white reflector and kind of like holding against the sun, you're bouncing the light off the white reflector onto the model to open up the shadows. And these are kind of the reflectors as well. The light tent, the famous light tent. This is a really, really great uh, tool that we also got at B&H. It comes with the three lights like this and the light tent. You can put your small objects in here and shoot jewelry and shoot different things. What happens is since it's all white with, with the, uh, the, the this fabric, it bounces light all around. So you're not getting any shadows when you shoot in the light tent. So camera will be in front, lights on the side, and you're getting basically a perfectly crisp image for a light tent. And this goes probably for about 200 bucks at B&H. So now we're gonna talk about lighting centers. So, uh, here's an example of a bottle we shot for a juice company back in Montreal. So what we did for this, this is set up here, if you can kind of see it. Um, we have a four light setup, so one light above, two lights here, and the juice in the middle. So I like to use this, it's from a company called F-Stoppers. It's called a flash disc. It's $49. Um, but what makes it so great is that you can just put it on top of your flash head. Or speed light, and it gets into really tight spaces. So if you don't want, if you don't have the whole setup like this, you can just use a few of these, and you can kind of get the job done. So this, this basically creates a nice circular light around your images. So over here, we had one light above to kind of give light to the bottle cap. We had two on the side to kind of give that nice silhouette, and we had another light that you don't see in the frame that's illuminating the logo. So it's a real full light setup to shoot a bottle like this. To, to bless you. To, to give you that sort of look. So it's a little flash disk from a, a, stop, a, a, a online website called F-Stoppers, which also gives you great photography tips as well if you want to check it out. Go ahead, next slide. So we did the natural light as well. That's another setup I, I spoke about earlier, using the light. And I said, over on this side here, you can put a, you can put a bounce card or a, white, or a white sheet of paper or a white phone form, and the light from the window will hit the card and then go back and hit the actual fan and kind of the open up the shadows a bit. And that's the final result of what it looks like when you shoot it with the natural light. Strobe lights or continuous light, again, we spoke about shooting from above and getting that shot. And that, that would be the result. Obviously, you gotta clean it up a bit, but that's just a, a, out the camera raw, what it looks like when you light from above. Two light setups even the light. So here's an example, a perfect example of the tripod on the tilted head with two light setups. One going left, one going right, and you won't get any shadows around your item. So you can do one left, one right, and shoot from above. Another example, you can shoot one. So another, another thing, the softbox, the bigger the softbox, the bigger the light source. So if you have one light source that's really big with a big softbox, you can really illuminate a lot more space. So we can actually shoot that same pole with just one light above. And again, if I'm using the light tent, so this we have a camera inside to avoid all of the reflections and three lights around the light tent. A great set I like to go to a lot, uh, it's called lightingdiagrams.com. Lightingdiagrams.com basically shows you an image and it shows you how to photograph your lighting. So if you ever wondered how something was lit, you can go to that site, you can pick up an image, say I like that, that resembles my product, and it'll give you a detailed, um, the camera out of power for shot. So this particular camera on top left, normally you'll see it here. Um, it was shot at 1 15th of a second on a tripod, obviously. It was F11, because you want everything sharp, ISO 400. So we had one softbox camera and another light. So there was two lights hitting the camera. Next slide. And this is the result that you get from that particular light setup. Here's an example of a lifestyle shot that we did inside of a studio. This is a model by the name of Eli out of New York City. So we had a three light setup. We had one light lighting his lower half, one light lighting the other half, and then one light lighting the background. 
Have you ever struggled with having your background be, to be really white so you need to light the background? So generally in a studio setup you want to have three lights minimum, one on the background to kind of make it white, and also separates the subject from the background. It's not going to have what you call flat photography. You don't want your image to come out flat or dull, you really want to have lighting in the background so it separates him from the actual background and you want to light his face and his lower body. So this is a three light setup if you're doing a light up top in the studio. Glare is also a big problem that we kind of encounter. So this is a guy by the name of Sunflower Man. Uh, he is an illustrator. So I shot him uh, one year, and you know, in his eye, in his glasses, we had a lot of glare from the soft boxes. So to avoid glare when shooting people with glasses, you just raise your light source. So you just raise your light a bit higher, so you don't see it reflecting in the glass. That's how you avoid glare. Shooting leather goods, same thing. It's the distance of the, of the light to your actual product. You want to have it a bit of a way so you don't have too many hot spots or highlight spots in the actual images. So we shot this, you see a bit of highlights, which is what you want, but you don't want the camera to be directly on it because that's going to create like a lot of spots and blotches on the actual, on the actual product. Just leather leather goods. Shooting transversal products. Next slide, please. For those of you who have glasses and, and clear products, the way we look at this is, we have, behind the glass, we have a, tra a, tra a translucent paper, and we have a light behind that. So that light is not directly hitting the product, it's actually hitting the paper and, and softening the light behind it, and we have a light overhead. So that's, that way you have no reflection, you see a bit of dark. The dark is probably me in the camera. Uh, but you have a, a clear glass. So if you want to shoot glass or clear products, you want to have a light behind with a translucent paper that you find in most photography stores to kind of create that, that glow behind the image and that directly on the actual glass, and then you want to shoot it from above. You want to have a light source from above. Types of product photography, really important when you're sitting in your shop. You want to have flat white, you want to have a lifestyle shot, you want to have a detail shot. That's how you get your customers to see what your product looks like on an e-commerce store, what it looks like on the actual person, and what it looks like in detail. So this is an example of a flat white uh, lifestyle shot, detail shot. So you have your shirt on your flat white, and Shopify also supports this, where you can have multiple pictures for your image. So it's really great to have all three. You have your lifestyle shot, so your model actually wear your garments, so we kind of visualize what it looks like. And you want to have a detail shot. Let's just say you have special trimming on your collar, or your cuff, you actually want to show that. You can actually shoot that with your macro lens, even if it's a clothing apparel, to show your logo, the details of stitching, and kind of really bring it to life. So those are the three types of shots you want to have on your website when you're doing product photography. Another uh, last tip for lifestyle, when you're doing product photography, you want to make sure there's, move, there's movement there's, and there's, a, there's, there's a motion in your actual shot. So have your model move and take a step forward, then take the shot. And that will kind of give it some life. You kind of see it in action. So you always want to make sure that your model is kind of moving. You can do the standard shot like this, which is the model shot, but also have, also have them moving. And I think we're done for today. Uh, we're going to go through some resources real quick. Um, obviously, uh, Shopify blog, if you guys have any, any questions, you want to learn more about um, e-commerce, anything like that, you go to Shopify blog, Shopify manual, Shopify experts, and obviously the support team as well can help you out with any questions you have at your store. And thank you very much. I'll take questions if you have any questions. And be sure to follow us on Instagram, Shopify, or last few minutes on Instagram. Any questions at all? Go ahead. One, one second, I'll bring you up. Oh, go ahead. Make sure you say uh, your store and what you sell. Yes, hi. Um, hi. My store is lindydesigns.com. I do handmade aprons. Um, the struggle I have with like, doing photography and on a really bare-bones budget. So I'm torn. I, I like the idea of doing the three different types of shots. Yes. But the aprons are a little hard because they're a little bit longer and it's hard to get the entire apron in the shot. And I'm not sure if I should just do it on a flat surface or do it on um, you can do both. I mean, when you can lay it on a, on a flat, I mean, someone wearing an apron, maybe in a kitchen setting or a warmer setting, would kind of give it some more life. So it could just be a lower lower half of the shot. It doesn't have to be the whole person in the apron. So wearing the apron, standing in front of like a stoneboard kitchen and just get the lower half with some nice lighting, would be great that way. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? So not a sick 
Yeah, I'm Tyler with AvantiBodyJewelry.com. Uh, bad SEO name, but a great brand. Uh, we have the tiniest products on the planet. Which yes. Is like nose rings, diamonds, gold stuff. Yes. And uh, we're looking at like the Olo clips. Yes. What do you think of those for just the inexpensive macro lens? You know, the 7x and 21x. I I used to own, I used to use Olo clip uh, on my mobile phone, but if you're doing Keep in mind that when you're doing e-commerce, you're competing with the world online, right? So your competitors are not using an old one. You're using a real SLR camera with a macro lens. So you don't want to kind of cut, take a shortcut and use an old clip. The, the distortion is not good enough. The image is not going to be great with what I'm saying online. So I would, I would definitely invest in an SLR with a macro lens to make sure you're getting crisp, great, great photos. So oh, how many starter DSLRs that you would suggest? Yeah, you can get, uh, if you go in Canon, you can get a Rebel, uh, Rebel, Rebel T7, uh, T5, I believe, or a Nikon D3200. And the macro lens, it's always a 105 millimeter or 100, and that's, that's going to run you seven, eight hundred dollars but it's well worth it. I know, it's, it's, it's well worth it. You're definitely going to see a, an improvement on your sales because we can kind of zoom in and see what you're actually offering. And all of them, is, it's, it's great for, you know, Instagram, but not for your online shop. Got it. Thank you. I would recommend an iPhone for your online, for your online shop. Yeah, what's up? Websites that you can connect with other photographers that can do it for you, or other creatives, sorry. Uh, maybe even Craigslist, you can find someone that can do like a great portion of the next work for you. Yeah, absolutely. But I would definitely try. Even, no, no, even in your own home, just put a frame up on the wall, on this, like, close to the window, and shoot a, a wide image and kind of give your audience a, a reason to buy your pieces because they can visually see it. Okay. It's not cheesy, not at all. Alright, what about, what, what do you think about like multiple? So it depends what you're selling, right? If you're, yeah. selling, if you're selling uh that one piece and you have 50 different pieces, I don't know which one I want. You kinda wanna do one at a time. Kind of yeah. do one piece. We can have multiple but kind of zoom in on the one piece that you're actually selling. Okay. But you could do I mean you, you can play around with it. Yeah. In your slider on your homepage, you can have a nice little shot with maybe four pieces back to back and that's your slider. But then when you actually go to the product image, when you click on it, you see it visually, you see it visually on your actual wall. Okay. That's good. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell us what you said. Hi, my name is Chase. I'm on Shopify Partners. I'm inside Silver Rounds. Hey, Chase, how are you? I had a question about yeah. shadows, um, like the swell bottles, for example. The yes. Shadows that go under the image. Is that done mostly in post? Or is it no, 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 no. That's lighting technique. Okay. You want to make, like, yeah, I mean, you want to get everything you want out of the camera at first. Yeah. And that's because post can cost you a lot of money if someone's be touching for you. You have photographers that shoot poor images, but they rely on charging you for the post. To get their photo, their, their, touch, their retouch to, to, to kind of do it all. But you want to make sure that you get no shadow. It depends what you want. Yeah. Generally, they look like that. You don't want any shadows on the backdrop, you want it on the ground. So it's how you light it that's going to avoid the shadows. The post is to kind of sharpen the bottles, but I think you do everything in camera first. In camera, okay. Yeah, yeah it's interesting because I mean, like for Amazon, for example, you can't have shadows in your images. Right. So I've asked people that have shadows without shadows and that have post, but. I mean, listen, if, if, if you don't have a great photographer or a great lighting expert with you, and, or a great photographer, you can do all the posts, but it's more time consuming and more money and more cost, of course. But it can be done in post, absolutely. Okay. I've messed up a shot before, and I'm like, okay, you have to get to the client, we're going to do it in post. 
the, the exact size of your lens and focal lens through. And then you would shoot better. You have a portrait, portrait your computer, so you can see what's going on inside the tent, and you just shoot the shutter, hit your shutter from inside your camera, so you can see what's going on without having to peek and look underneath. Would it be easier to use something from the light sensors? Yeah, I mean, you can, you can use a set of you can do the juice bottles. You can have uh, three or four light sources. A bottle, two lights on the side can give it a nice silhouette, one light above, and one light hitting the, the low one. So you pull that set up. And you can shoot it from out in the open. Like that's cool too, if you can master how to use it, absolutely. Oh, sorry, oh, okay. Debbie from Craft Keepers and We sell uh, canvas cards. 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 Like play cards. No, like um, reading cards. Reading cards, got it. Okay. So we've taken the detail shots, yes. we've taken the white shots, but we're not taking any lifestyle shots. Your experience, is it worth it for us to take the time to go in and do all those lifestyle shots? I wouldn't go back, but going forward, I would think about introducing lifestyle shots, even for your slider on your home page. So if you're looking at a card, just reading a card, close up, that's what that's lifestyle it is, to so understand what, what the purpose of the card is. So just, you know, I wouldn't go back. But generally going forward, just think about it. When you're doing your shoot, hey listen, can we go by a window or somewhere and have someone reading a card, read a card, or looking over it, or have it on a desk, next to a laptop, computer on a desk. Just, you know, a nice staging. It's all about staging, creating that, that, oh, that can be in my home. Yet. So I wouldn't go back. But so I you're finding that people do enjoy those pictures more? Absolutely, more. because we're, we're, we live in a visual world, right? So just seeing the flat white stuff is boring. You're like, okay, I don't know what that does, but it looks like what it looks like, what it looks like. So you really want to put it in a setting that we all relate to, and that increases the click through as well. I'm selling a standing desk. Standing desk? Right. Um, I was wondering, I have very basic Photoshop skills. What are the biggest thing for the skills that I can learn in Photoshop for folks uh, that you find yourself using? So you're, so you're an image is shot already? Right. And you just want to clean it up in Photoshop? Yeah, just wondering what I should focus on. Tough question. Uh, it's I mean, different every time, maybe. But I mean, if you have a great image, you're just doing color correction in Photoshop. Okay. You're not really, you know, you're brushing stuff out. You're just kind of like, you know, just color correcting and make sure the colors match with the actual part inside. Color correction. Um, yeah, I mean, color correction, okay. the right balance. But make sure, you're, make sure you're a photographer, if you're shooting yourself, you're shooting raw, so you can actually play with all those, those, those things. I use Lightroom to process most of my photos. Uh, Lightroom is it's all based on sliders, so that means you can slide your exposure, your shadows. It's, 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 it's easier than going into Photoshop and doing all the other stuff, which is the beginning of the I'll use Lightroom. Okay. Uh, any resources or tutorials you recommend for that type of if you go to fstoppers, fstoppers.com, yeah. it's a great resource site, it's Flarn as well, P-H-L-E-A-R-N.com. Okay. It's a great resource for just, you know, overall knowledge on photography, and it covers a lot of what I spoke about as well. Mm -hmm. Also, Shopify blog too, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information of just, you know, do it yourself and learning the basics, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. I think we have one over here. I think we have time for two more. Yeah, two more, so up here and then uh, to yourself. Hello, my name is Ryan. Uh, my project's still in development. Okay. Um, I've heard people using Blister for their uh, product shots. Absolutely. Kind of look at that like, slide effect. Yes. What's your experience with that? Do you have any other techniques? Uh, like so, so, yeah, Blister is really great when you're shooting bottles and you want to kind of emulate uh, a beer bottle that came out of a freezer. You kind of have to, like, it's all trickery, right? You're not really taking the bottle of the freezer and shooting it. So, you're going to get you know, a spray bottle and spray the bottle and make sure that you protect the lid so it doesn't peel off and you use close to that. It's, it's been working a million times and it works really great in creating that effect and, and, and making your bottle look like a the freezer. It's, it's, yeah, it's worthwhile, absolutely. Are there any other similar type of techniques not just with this room, but to the There's tons with fake ice as well. We, we, never, we never use real ice when shooting liquids. We also use fake ceramic glass. I mean, it's $40 on like a cube. But it's, 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 it doesn't melt on you, so you kind of really set up your shot and, and, and you know make sure that it looks amazing. And you can spend four hours with your with your whiskey or your beer using fake ice. There's all types of tricks too. And F stop has talks about a lot of the tricks as well uh, on the website. So kind of what else you can use to take some tricks to to enhance your photography. Photography is all about staging. It's all about 
uh, creating an image. We're just not taking a beautiful image. When you see those crazy images on, photo, uh, on commercials, they've been really manipulated on set to look that way. You know, you have some fake lettuce, you put the lettuce together, and then Photoshop the little grains and the buttons to make everything look amazing. It's, I mean, yeah, so this one's a great way to get that fake guys. Yeah, my name is Tony. I'm with GoFlight Technologies. We make uh, flight simulation hardware, so it's basically consumer electronics. Okay. And we have uh, we have uh, the seamless background with the diffuser <coughs> boxes that we use. Right. We always run into still getting reflections on our digital displays. So when we want the product to turn on, so people can see the radio communication callouts, we're getting the uh, reflection that's basically washing that out. We've corrected that the best we can. Oh, okay. But is there any way, I mean, I know we the lights, but it seems that no matter what angle we change the lights to and what diffuser, we're still getting a lot of uh, reflections of that. Uh, generally, what you can do, you can put a grid on your light source. A grid? A grid, yeah, they're called, they're called eggshell grids. Uh, there's a company called Mag, Mag something, I forget, anyways, they make uh, grids for speed lights. <coughs> Magbot, I believe it's called. So it's basically a magnet with a with a 10 degree grid, which kind of concentrates the light source. So it's not a huge source, so that the, the smaller the light source, it would kind of zero and tighter on your actual display. So that way you can kind of avoid some of that. And also the distance of the light too would help as well. If you have your light directly over your your, your product, it's going to basically wash out the display. Can you make a large light? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So on a large light, I mean, what light? What brand are you using? Do you know what brand you're using? Box? Yeah. I, no, no, okay, but you can go online, you can go to BH, and just look for uh, softbox grids, okay. and you're gonna see they're black. They're really expensive though, okay. um, unfortunately. But you can get the small one from Mag, Mag, uh, I want, um, Mag Moon, sorry, Mag Moon for the for speed lights. So you can have a separate light source lighting your grid, which will, will kind of like narrow in on the 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree grids that go on top of your light source. You can buy it also for the soft boxes as well, but the light grade will kind of help with that. And, and uh, ra maybe raising your aperture a bit when you're doing the photos to kind of make the scene a bit darker, you get less more on and lower the light power, you get less light as well going into your product. Thank you so much. Thank you so much guys for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks, Pascal. Um, so for all of you, if throughout the lunchtime there is 